in the next question 149 which is based on magnetism and matter you have been given a bar magnet of length l you see the entire length is l and magnetic dipole moment m is bent in the form of an arc here the entire length you can say it is l and now it is bent in the form of an arc as shown in the figure the new magnetic dipole moment will be now see here the magnetic dipole moment is dependent on the fact that what is the straight distance between the two poles one pole has been say marked here another pole has been marked here initially when the magnet was straight then the magnetic dipole moment m will be written as small m into l where small m i am counting this is the pole strength and initial length was given to be l but now when you are bending it like this this is in the form of a straight line so the new magnetic moment m dash if you see this is m into r where you can see this r is the distance from the center to this circle arc and this is the radius if you are having this angle to be 60 degree so naturally this is the equilateral triangle form that is why i have taken the straight distance to be r this is what you have to calculate now you see what is this l l is basically 1/6 of the circumference so you can say this is small l is 2 pi r divided by 6 if you substitute this value of r what do you get this r is basically 3 l by pi isn't it and if you are substituting this expression here finally you will find that the new magnetic dipole moment that will be coming it to be 3 m by pi this is the most appropriate option for this particular question now let us look at question number 150 in the next question 150 which is again based on system of particles and rotational motion here it says that a rod pq this is the rod you can see of mass capital m and length l as it has been shown here is hinged at end p that means this rod is ready to rotate about this particular point p the rod is kept horizontal by a massless string this is the string which is keeping it horizontal tied to point q as shown in figure when the string is cut now see you are cutting this particular string if you will be cutting this string this rod will have the tendency to rotate like this you see it will be rotating this way under the influence of you can say the torque of the weight of the rod the initial angular acceleration of the rod has been demanded now you see in this particular question you simply use the equation torque is equal to i alpha about this particular point p because this is a case of pure rotation about point p so i have used this equation torque is equal to i alpha now who is applying torque torque is being applied by the weight this is force and the perpendicular distance from the hinge that is l by 2 this is equal to the moment of inertia of the rod about one end that is ml square by 3 so here it is ml square by 3 multiplied by alpha and finally you can get the value of alpha that is 3g by 2l and for that matter most appropriate answer you will be having that is the fourth one now look at next question 151 now in the next question 151 which is a purely theoretical question based on the chapter semiconductor electronics in which they are talking about the basic properties of n type materials you see in any n type material basically these are the electrons which are the majority carriers and the holes are the minority carriers and you can achieve n type materials when you have doped with pentavalent atoms they are phosphorus arsenic and so on so here it is saying in an n type semiconductor which of the following statement is true here you see the most appropriate option which comes out to be is the second one which is holes are minority carriers as you said just now in n type semiconductors electrons are majority carriers and holes are minority carriers so that is matching with your answer and how you are achieving the majority carriers as electrons because the dopants must be having more electrons they are pentavalent so it is mentioning holes are minority carriers and pentavalent atoms are dopants because it has been doped with pentavalent atoms rest of the options are not satisfying this particular condition so most appropriate option is the second one 
now let us look at next question 152 in the next question 152 which is from the chapter semiconductor electronics and based on the concept of transistor you see here it is common emitter amplifier having a voltage gain g capital g has been given to you the transistor used has transconductance 0 0.03 mo and current gain is 25 in the above transistor is replaced with another one with transconductance 0 0.02 you see the transconductance is getting changed and the current gain also has been changed so new voltage gain has been demanded in terms of the old one now in this particular question you see you have to use the formula that voltage gain voltage gain this is equal to the trans or mutual conductance which you can denote by gm multiplied by resistance of the load in this particular question the current gain which has been given to you that is 25 and 20 they are not relevant only thing which is relevant is that voltage gain is directly proportional to gm you understand so here you can say ki g was proportional to the initial transconductance or mutual conductance that was 0 0.03 0 0.03 and the new value of voltage gain if i am denoting by x then you see this is proportional to the new value of transconductance that is 0 0.02 therefore if you have x by capital g this is equal to 2 by 3 so x is what x is 2g by capital 3 so the most appropriate answer for this particular question will be the fourth option that is 2g by 3 now look at next question 153 now in the next question 153 which is based on dual nature of radiation and matter that to photoelectric effect it's a very straightforward question based on formula it says that for photoelectric emission from a certain metal the cutoff frequency is new cutoff frequency has been given to you if radiation of frequency 2 new impinges that is incident on the metal plate the maximum possible velocity of the emitted electron will be to solve this particular question let us suppose i am using the expression that whatever is the incident frequency based on that this is the energy which is coming in and this is equal to you happen to say that this is you see i am calling work function plus you know this is ke max isn't it this is the basic formula of photoelectric effect for which einstein got nobel prize now here it is saying that the incident frequency is 2 nu so here i will be writing h into 2 nu you see this is the energy incident and phi can be written in terms of the cutoff frequency so that is also threshold frequency cutoff frequency has been given to be equal to nu so here i will be writing h nu and for kinetic energy maximum i am using the expression half mv max square so this is half m v square i am writing it is understood that the velocity i am using here that is the maximum velocity which has been demanded in this particular question so it's a straightforward expression you can see you will be subtracting it and finally you will find that a velocity is coming out to be 2 h nu upon m and taken the square root of that you see you are subtracting this from this that is h nu and 2 will be getting multiplied so this is 2 h nu divided by m and taking the square root so most appropriate option here in this particular question will be the second option as it has been shown here let us discuss the next question that is 154 